Stand by for terminal count. Overlook Horizon High Altitude Balloons, an Ontario County nonprofit. This is no ordinary balloon. What a view! Over 110,000 feet. This is incredible. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon, coming to you live today from Far here for our next weather balloon launch for Overlook Horizon 12. Today's nickname is Flexer. Mostly on our micro payload today. Uh, so if you followed along a couple times for the last couple flights, we had Overlook Horizon 10, Overlook Horizon 11. Both of those featured our micro, our micro payload, uh, which is our little itty bitty tiny payload that is intended to fly by itself. But today we're going to do another test with that, flying on the outside of our larger payload with all the cameras and everything. And really what we're testing today is trying to make sure that that antenna is flexible enough, flexor, uh, is trying to make sure that that antenna is flexible enough to actually withstand the descent phase and not break off like it did on the Overlook Horizon 10 and 11. So that's what we're looking for today. I point over here like you can see it, the payload's right there. Um, so that's what we're looking for today. Um, launch is happening at noon today. So we were originally targeting 11 o'clock, but our winds today were, uh, uh, they weren't working with us, so uh, so we had to push it back a little bit toward uh, to noon. So we're about uh, just under an hour and ten minutes until we actually lift off. Um, but uh, we're a little bit nervous for this flight today because we are uh, we are looking at a potential water landing, uh, which is something I would like to avoid because the micro payload will not survive a water landing. So we're going to try to avoid a water landing if possible. Um, so. No mic wind blocker thingy. Oh no, I don't. Is the wind bad? I don't have a mic wind blocker for this guy. I could have, I could have put my other microphone on, but I don't have it. Sorry. I can. Well, if I if I get a second, I can switch microphones. I do have one that has a wind blocker there. Um. So. So I'll check that out. Um, so hello to uh, Gregorius, Tom, Obi Wan. Uh, good to see you guys here on the, on the YouTube page. Uh, we're also. Simulcasting, streaming on Facebook as well. Uh, trying to get the Facebook comments up here now um, so that at least I can see what everybody's saying uh, over on the Facebook side of things. Um, so we're looking, uh, we're looking pretty good today for, for launch. A bit breezy uh, for today. I was hoping to keep that down a little bit so that uh, the balloon filling is a little bit easier. Um, but uh, we do have something, a couple new things happening today. Uh, number one, I'm going to be a little bit outside my comfort zone because I'm going to try to be as hands-off as possible with the balloon filling. I'm going to try to stay with you guys. Um, but it's kind of breezy, so I may have to go help. But uh, usually I'm right in there getting the balloon sealed up, filled, and everything else. I'm going to try to be hands-off today if I can. We're going to let the crew do that so I can stick with you guys, tell you what's going on, and uh, try to keep you informed during the whole process here. Um, but I may have to cut away to help out. Um, but also one thing that's pretty exciting for today is we got some new landing prediction software uh, that will happen during the flight. So the way this is gonna work is uh, the balloon, while it's ascending, is gonna measure the wind speed, wind direction, and then as soon as balloon burst happens, the next transmission, the first transmission we get after balloon burst, the landing prediction system is gonna kick in, hopefully, we'll see if it works. It's gonna kick in and start sending more accurate predictions based on the measurements it made on the way up and it's going to be sending us updated predictions on where it thinks it's going to land so hopefully that works we're going to see we've done a whole bunch of tests with it uh, they were all simulated tests so this will be the first time that we've actually gotten to give it a shot with some some real flight data as we're going through so uh, so that's uh, those are the couple things that uh, that we're looking at. Uh, so Gregorius says the wind on my mic is a bit bad. I'll try to. So just, I'll just cover it like this. The wind's coming in from this direction. I'll do. I do have. Here, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. One second. Oh wait, I don't have it over here. I thought I had it right here next to me. I do have a wind muff somewhere. Oh wait, maybe it's right down here on the floor. I got a wind muff in my little pouch here. But this is a double. This is a stereo mic, so it's got. Two microphones, one on each side. I don't know how I'm gonna work that, but we can try it. Here, let's try it on the fly real quick. See if I can pull it out of here. 
maybe just get it on the one here. It'll look like I have a little furry critter. Where's the opening? Sorry, gonna be loud for a second. Nope, can't get it on there. All right, I'll try a different mic here in a little while. All right, so let's see. Uh, where's my mouse here? All right, so uh, another thing we've got uh, that I think we have figured out here, hopefully, another first for this one. Oh, did I? Did my microphone not come with me on that? It looked like I, you weren't actually getting sound on that. Yeah, I, I forgot to actually include the sound on that shot, so you weren't catching anything. Let me try that again, <laughs> Let me, and I'll tell you what's going on. But I um, let's see. Where's my microphone? We got to get. Uh, we'll throw the microphone into that shot so I can, so you guys can actually hear me. There we go. All right, let's try this again. So this is what I was trying to show. We've got a new camera angle here today. Uh, we used to have this last year, but then the software updated and I couldn't get our old camera to work, but we finally got a new camera update here. Uh, so we'll hopefully give you, uh, hopefully give you some better shots uh, during the actual launch itself because I'm undercover here under the tent, so you can't see, you can't really see the balloon launch. So hopefully, I guess it's this way. This camera here will give you an actual view of the balloon as it ascends, because it's going to ascend uh, that direction, um, which is pretty much straight out from this camera view right here. So hopefully you get a decent shot there of the actual um, of the actual launch itself. Um, so let's see. This is the first launch I've watched. Do you commentate over the flight? Um, so yeah, the way this is going to work for today's launch is. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go down through the countdown, try to tell you everything that's going on uh, with the flight here today, um, so you get an idea of what's happening, what everybody's doing behind us, uh, and then uh, there'll probably be a couple times where it gets a little bit quiet if I have to jump over and, and help a little bit. Um, but we'll launch at uh, exactly an hour and two minutes from now. Um, so you see the countdown that's up here in the top corner. Now it's really That was a big wind gust. Now I gotta, now I gotta put you on pause here for a second because I gotta, I gotta think it broke loose here. <laughs> Give me one second. You'll see me in the other camera view here for a second, but uh, I gotta hook this back up before we, uh, before it goes flying. One second. All right, there we go. There's the beauty of being live. We got we got to deal with these issues as they come up here. Um, so, sorry for that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Where'd my Facebook comments go? And where's my mouse? There it is. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I got a couple people joining us here on the Facebook tried to uh, try to stream on both uh, or on a whole bunch of different platforms yeah, but a couple people joining like us oh, here wow. on um, tried to stream on a whole bunch of different platforms uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't working out for me I do have I got a new service this was gonna be the first time I used it but uh, it didn't work out I started getting it getting it prepared but uh, wasn't happening but we do have a new service uh, that will hopefully let us simulcast on YouTube Facebook Periscope Twitch you stream. Mm, don't know if I can think of anything else, but we get a, get all the bases covered all at once, and uh, that way we can get a whole bunch of people to join in and hang out with us for the day. Um, so we got some time here. We're uh, one hour prior to launch here. We're going to start filling the balloon at about T minus fifty five minutes, uh, and that'll that usually takes about twenty minutes to fill the balloon, get it sealed off. Um, 
then we'll start addressing the payload, uh, getting that ready, get it powered up, usually about 30, 30 minutes or so. Right about the 20 minute mark, we have to do some notifications to the FAA, let them know that uh, we're on time and we're about to launch. Uh, and then we'll launch right at the, with any luck, T minus zero, we'll have launch, lift off. Um, we'll stick around for probably about a half hour, 45 minutes. And then uh, after that, then we have to book out of here. We're going to be tracking it the whole time. You guys can track it live as well from home. If you want to follow along, see how it's going. See if our new landing prediction software works. You can certainly follow along and, and you'll actually get to see that yourself on the map. Um, so speaking of maps, let's take a look at today's map and what we're talking about for predictions. So this is our predicted flight path today. So we're in a little bit of a different launch area than we normally are. This is kind of like our secondary location. We've done it once, uh, done it once I think here before. Uh, Overlook Horizon 2 launched from Farmington Town Park, which is where we're at now. Um, so we did launch from here one other time, um, but uh, uh, that, that's it, just one other time. So uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, it's a little bit further north. Um, so normally we launch right in, in the middle of Canadagua, which you can see on the map is a little bit further south from the red dot that's over here on the side. So the red dot way on the far side of the map, that's our launch site. Uh, usually we launch right from Canadagua, so a little bit further south from that, right by Canadagua Lake. Uh, but as you can see, the uh, predicted flight path today is, is very much to the, uh, to the east. So it's gonna, it's gonna go up, pretty much go straight to the east, uh, but it does do this little loop around here, which I think is kind of cool. That'll be very interesting uh, to see, see how that plays out. Uh, but the big concern for today is how close we are to Skinny Atlas Lake and Otisco Lake. Um, so we're, we're uh, usually try to stay at least seven miles away from major bodies of water, but this landing area was a little bit difficult to control that. Some of it's because of that loop there, because uh, you know normally the things we can do to control how far the balloon goes, or you know whether it comes short or goes longer, we can we can adjust the ascent rate, how fast it how fast it uh, goes up. We can adjust the descent rate with smaller or larger parachutes. Um, we can change the balloon size so that it bursts sooner uh, or bursts later. But with this little loop around, it. It almost didn't matter what we did, we were still gonna get the same landing area because if you think about it, if we ascend faster, then it's gonna break sooner and it doesn't do that loop back, uh, or I guess it's this way in the, okay, this way in the, yeah. It doesn't do that loop back in the, um, uh, at the upper part there. So it doesn't have enough time to loop back, but it doesn't go as far, but it still ends up in the same area. So. I don't know, it was a difficult one to, uh, to get an actual time nailed down uh, because pretty much all the times were hitting that spot. So we're kind of just going to cross our fingers and see, uh, hope that we don't hit the water. So it's relatively small, a lot of land there. So hopefully we can skip right past it and we don't have to worry about it. But, uh, you know, that this is just one flight path prediction. So there's a lot of, a lot of options. It likely will not follow this exactly. Um, so we come up with kind of a heat map, uh, which looks a little bit like this. Um, the heat map is uh, a somewhat good indicator. For whatever reason, this prediction software that does this heat map always puts the heat map on the short side of the flight. So typically we see landing on the trailing edge. I guess it would be this edge, or let's see, where is it? This edge right here, um, the trailing edge of the, uh, of the heat map is usually where we see landing. So it rarely lands in the center of the red or the beginning end of it, usually the trailing end. And the downside here is the trailing edge is right where Skinny Atlas Lake is. Um, so that's that's one thing we are gonna try very hard to stay out of. Um, so that's the big concern for today. Uh, you've also got, you've always got the concerns about landing in, in uh, tall trees. We do have some new equipment today for landing in tall trees. We got a nice new air cannon that fires a, a projectile way up in the air with a string on it that we can hopefully yank down a payload if it gets stuck up in a tall tree. New toy, thanks to my buddy Lance who letting us uh, use that for today. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try that out uh, if we land in a tree today. Hopefully, we just don't land in a tree. If we just land in a field, then we can just go pick it up and go home. That would be the best. That's the that's the best option, really. Um, 
Let's see, my Facebook comments keep closing on me. All right, so our winds died down a little bit here today. Uh, so we're down to uh, down about two miles an hour winds, but they're, they've gotten a little bit gusty. We've hit seven, eight, ten miles an hour uh, on occasion while we were, uh, you know, as we're getting ready here. So uh, we're going to hope that, the, that those speeds stay down a little bit today because we don't want, uh, it's very hard to fill the balloon when the wind speeds are up. So. So uh, we should be, uh, they're going to be starting to fill the balloon here. Awesome. Copy that. We're, we're good. Good for balloon filling. So they're going to, this is normally the part where I leave you guys and I head over there. This is, this is unnerving for me. I may have to go help for a little bit. Um, All right, it's making me nervous here. I'm normally right in the center of this, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to be hands off here. So, so that, there's our heat map that we're looking at for today. So, and I'll, I'll try to keep it here on this other view here, so you can uh, you might get a, a better picture of the balloon as it's being filled uh, over on the uh, the far side of that shot there. Let's see. Uh, pull our comments back up here. Um, let's see. All right, so Tom's asking what the tracking code is for the balloon. So he had KD2 KPZ-9. Dash nine is our is our chase car. Um, so uh, we've got a couple different tracking symbols uh, or SSIDs. The best option would be to go to overlookhorizon.com slash map and that'll take you to the map with all the symbols on it. But if you're looking for individual ones, dash nine is the chase car, dash 11 is the primary computer, dash 12 is our microcomputer, and dash 15 is our new landing prediction. So it's actually gonna send an APRS signal out uh, with a new SSID and send its, uh, send its predicted landing site. So, ooh, big B right there. Um, let's see, I keep losing my mouse for today. So I'm not sure if you can hear that. It is getting a little bit on the louder side here. That's a helium going in the balloon. So we're getting some lift here. And the way this is gonna work is uh, there's a lift weight on the bottom. So you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, water jugs here. The three on the outside of the tarp here. This guy, one way over here, and this one right here, those are safety weights. Uh, those will make sure that the balloon doesn't fly away. Uh, and then there's one in the center. You can't really see it. It's right behind his leg there. The, the one in the center is, is our lift weight. Once the balloon can consistently lift that lift weight and hold it up off the ground, then we know the balloon is, is full and we're good to go. We can shut it off, seal it up. So you see in the other shot there, you see the balloon going up a little bit. Yeah, getting pretty good pull right now. The wind is not, it's not too bad. It, it does have a little bit of a pull to it. Yeah, starting to pick the lift weight up. Oh yeah, a little bit. A little bit close. We're gonna move our our anemometer here a little bit close to the balloon. Move it off to the side here. And see what we're see what we're reading here for wind speed. So we're we're sitting at about uh, six miles per hour is our is our wind speed right now. So so the winds are a little bit gusty. It's a little more than we like to have. This is not crazy though. You get over ten miles an hour and it it really gets difficult. To control. Waiting for the wind to die down for the next couple Yeah. Yeah, I would go I would go more than that so it's it's really pulling it up off the 
You want to get it so that when you let go, it distinctively goes up. So this is, this is the uncomfortable part for me. Normally I'm right there, I'm the guy that's controlling the nozzle. But one of our plans here for later on is uh, later on this summer, hopefully if we can get everything in order, we're gonna try to launch two balloons at the same time and see what the differences are. Um, so we're gonna try to control as much as we can to uh, get them exactly the same and ascend at the same rate. Uh, and we're just gonna see what happens and see how close or how far apart they drift and also see if we can get a camera shot from one balloon of the other balloon bursting. I think that would be pretty awesome. So that's one of the plans and that's, that's why I'm trying to take a hands-off approach here today. And we're gonna let, let these guys handle it and see, uh, see how we do here. Uh, let's see here. We got some comments coming in. Um, yeah, Tom said, yeah, it must be 11. Um, let's see. Oh, it just clocked that this is only showing Overlook Horizon balloons. I'm not sure what that means, Tom. Uh, maybe I missed the context of that uh, comment there somewhere. Um, let's see. Uh, Ann says, love watching these streams. Hope to see one live someday. I think the kids would love it. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's a cool thing to see for, for kids. You see all the electronics uh, here. You see the big balloon. A lot of times if we have some downtime, we let the kids hold on to the balloon and feel how hard the balloon actually pulls up. Uh, depends on how windy uh, how windy it is. So Gregorius says, delegation is a good thing. Yeah, you, he's, I delegated moderator responsibility to, to Gregorius. So thanks to Gregorius for helping us out with that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to take a little uh, little bit of a hands-off uh, approach there. So, Michael Ferguson says, let the lobster steer. <laughs> no lobster today. We're going to let the lobster steer, steer the craft. Uh, come, I was hoping it was going to be the June flight because we got this flight. We're going to try to do one in June, and then we'll, kick, we'll do some more in July and August. Um, I don't know if it's going to come together fast enough for June, but we're going to try our hardest to... Uh, to uh, get that lobster. It's definitely going up this summer. Which flight it is, I don't know. That's going to be the hard thing. So so now, at this point, we're just getting the balloon filled up. Uh, I'm going to go find our countdown checklist. Can I see that countdown for a moment, please? Yeah. The next step is taking a picture of the balloon. Oh, yeah. I just want to see... Uh, I want to see what time I got to do my power ons for the payload. So I'm going to actually, I'm still going to do the payload power ons. We got a big checklist procedure here that we go through for all our flights. So this one, this this part of the flight is going to last for about uh, T minus 30 minutes is what we give for balloon filling, sealing it up. That still takes a little bit of time. So even though it may be full now, we still got to seal it. Um, and then at about T minus 30, we're going to start the payload operations. The nice thing is, even if they're not finished sealing at T minus 30, uh, I can still start the payload stuff. So another good thing about that delegation thing, right? So that's what we're that's what we're looking at today here. How's it going, guys? Yeah, I would give it a little more. And that one kind of threw us. We had, yeah. we had a bunch that just looked this. That was a good one. Yeah, we got a pretty dead spot here. It looks pretty good. That looks good. That looks good to me. That looks good to me. That's it. Yeah, that's after you seal it. You gotta seal it first. Oh. So the way we're uh, the way we're sealing this here, we've got um, the neck of the balloon is a lot thicker. You basically, just twist the neck. You get you want my help with? Yeah. By the way, Corey, before we go too far, we spotted that yeah, flaw. Oh, we got a little balloon defect. Do I have enough sure cord? There is, but you might want to take a picture of it now. Yeah, well, we'll take, take a picture of it. I think it's in 
good shape. Oh, where's the big counter, Mike wants to know. I'll show you the big counter here in just a second here. You take a picture. We got a little bit of a balloon defect here. I'm going to take a picture of it. Oh, I want a picture of myself. Hold on. All right, there we go. Not too bad. I think we can still seal it and go. Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't think that's going to break. Okay, so, so now we, we're going to twist it, take this off, Before. Put, put this on, move this on. Yeah. on. Before, you take, before you take the tape off, make sure there's a zip tie that has all the safety lines just in case you let go of it. So I would twist it, get one zip tie in that covers all the safety lines. Right, we're, we're using this to connect all the lines. We zip tie and tape this after, after we get a twist. Your safety's are in this line. It's going to stay, right? Stay. Well, I see what you That'll go around the whole thing. And, and all we got to do is take it off. Oh, gotcha. So you're going to zip. You're gonna zip tie and cover these guys right here. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. That works. Yeah. You get twist it, get one zip tie in, and then you'll detach it, U shape, right. two more zip ties, and then tape. electrical tape. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Two zips and one. We should have. We're gonna go three zip ties total, without uh, hopefully without busting the balloon there. So it's kind of nice that I have enough line to actually walk over there. You can actually hear me talking and hear what our discussion is all about. So, uh, let's see. You should accept customers, Tom said. We do accept customers. We have, uh, um, we've actually got a couple of commission pay, uh, launches coming up uh, here in the future. So we have some private launches. Uh, a lot of times, we, um, the inqu inquiries we get for those are usually for marketing purposes. Um, it's uh, somebody that's got a new product being launched that wants to fly it to the edge of space and uh, get that get that product out up in the uh, the upper stratosphere there um, and so uh, so we do have a couple of private flights coming up so if you're interested in a private flight we can certainly do that and you don't necessarily have to be here for the private lights private flight some of them are sending us a payload you can also do we have a balloon sat program which is mostly meant for students but um, Anybody can do it, really. But the balloon sap program, we got a couple of those coming up uh, as well. But the balloon sap program is basically uh, you would fly on one of our regular flights, and we just attach you to the payload train with the rest of our regular flights, and um, you just pay for the weight that uh, that we fly up, for, um, fly for it. So, so we do we do accept customers if you do want to fly something on board a weather balloon. Um, so anyways, Hank says hi. Hi, Hank. How are we doing? Um, let's see. Did I miss any other? Oh, Mike asked where the big counter is. So the big counter is... Uh, here, I'm going to take this off for one second. Big counter is over there. There's the payload right there. You can see the payload's kind of swinging, hanging from our tent there. Right behind it, uh, this guy right here, that's our, our new countdown clock, uh, mostly meant for... Uh, for the people that are watching here, we do have some spectators uh, that are going to watch for today and watch the balloon go. And one of the things that they could never see was the countdown because our, uh, our main countdown was right here on the live stream. So it's that countdown that's up in the corner. And so people here couldn't see it. It's also tough for, for us when we go to launch. We couldn't see the countdown because it's so tiny on this screen. Uh, but come launch time, it's, we're going to be way out, way out there where it's going to be hard to see that. So... Um, so yeah, we've got the uh, the big countdown clock now, uh, which is is uh, right spot on with the countdown clock you see there. <laughs> There's nothing real complicated going on. We just have to manually sync them up. Um, so, but they're spot on here. So, let's see. Tom wants to know how much do the customers pay for a flight? <laughs> so typically, like a uh, a balloon sat flight, if you're flying on one of our our flights is about one dollar per gram so it really just depends on how much weight you want to put on so it's a dollar per gram 
to fly on one of our flights. If you're looking for a private flight, uh, generally that's more in the realm of like $1,600 or $1,700 because um, that covers our, our team to get out here, get set up. Um, we usually, a lot of times they want to do a, a li- either a live broadcast or some video or some some live audience interaction. So we can certainly do all of that. Um, but the $1,600, $1,700 covers us getting the, uh, getting the flight, sending it up. You can use our tracking system. Uh, we're going to get you set up with, you know, if you want to have a mascot or something like that on board. So, yeah, it's about about 1700 for a private flight if it's just you and you alone. Uh, and those are U.S. dollars that I'm talking. So, uh, Marilyn says, I've never seen a weather balloon before. Are they always white or do they make colorful ones? Uh, upper atmosphere weather balloons that we use are pretty much always white. Um, they do make um, uh, they do make colored uh different color balloons i think uh red and black but those are usually what are called pilot balloons and that's what they're usually meant for measuring uh the cloud ceiling or you know how high up the clouds are so in a pilot balloon you fill up this big red balloon let it go and you wait until the moment that you can't see the red anymore and that's you're trying to figure out how high the clouds are and the red with the the white backdrop helps you see that balloon the white balloons are a lot easier to see for aircraft once they get above the cloud level the big white balloon against a bright blue background it's much easier to see so uh, most of these upper atmosphere ones that the weather balloon service uses uh, or the weather balloon service the national weather service and that we use they're pretty much all white i have seen some that are like a brownish goldish type color um, so they are um, do have those as well um, and then uh, let's see uh Yuval, hi there from Israel. Oh, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us. We got Israel in the house. Hank, when can I see the footage? So we will, it all depends on how recovery goes. Uh, if we cover, if we recover very easily and it's in a field, we can get stuff, at least photos posted as early as, as this afternoon. Uh, if it's stuck up in a tree or in a really difficult place and it, it's going to take us hours to get it down, then it's going to be delayed. Um, so typically, the way this is the way this is going to work is um, we will uh, we'll launch. We'll stick around. We'll talk. We'll track together for a little while, about half an hour after launch, and then um, after that, we'll shut down this live stream. You guys can track it online at overlookhorizon.com/map, um, and then shortly after balloon burst. We'll go live again, and you can join us for the recovery operations to see how well that goes, and we can see if, if we have mobile bandwidth. That's always the tough part about recovering. We can't control exactly where it lands, and most of the time, we shoot for a landing that's in a remote area. So it's almost guaranteed that mobile bandwidth will be much worse at the landing site. Um, but if we got decent bandwidth, then we'll do another live stream for recovery, and you can see see what we're dealing with and what we have to do for recovery. Um, and then we'll probably, and then we'll likely do a third one. Sometimes the second and the third one just mesh together, but um, usually we plan a third one after recovery, depending on how long it takes to recover. Um, and we'll give you a little sneak preview of the the footage. Uh, it's usually not great. It's just a uh, it's just a look through my phone at the computer screen. Um, but uh, so you get a sneak preview. Uh, hopefully, all that happens today. And then uh, we'll, probably in a, about a week or so. We'll actually get a formal video put together and post that post that on YouTube so that's the plan that's what we shoot for so uh, let's see we are uh, yeah we're looking good we also have we do have an automatic automatic tweet machine that uh, hopefully after launch should kick in right away that automatic tw- uh, Tweeting machine, I don't know what to call it yet. We gotta come up with a name for it. The Space Lobster Tweeter. Um, that will automatically tweet updates at OLHCN on Twitter. So make sure you follow at OLHCN on Twitter. You can you can get those those uh, live updates from the balloon. It doesn't do too. It doesn't it like set increments like 10,000 feet, 25, 50, 75, 100. So it, it sends out a couple of updates here and there. Um, So, yeah, let's see. We're about 35 minutes. It's about time for me to kick in and start doing some some payload stuff. I'm going to check on the checklist and see how everybody's doing here. How are we doing, everybody? It's looking good. Looks good. Should we we take a selfie? Selfie time. Yeah. 
All right, ready to take a selfie, everybody? Sure. <laughs> there we go. Got ourselves a balloon selfie. Who doesn't like selfies, right? Don't answer that question. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to pipe in for that. You should call the automatic tweeter the balloon hook. The balloon hook. Yeah, we got to come up with a catchy name for that. The automatic tweeter. I should. I didn't put the hashtag space lobster in the automatic tweeter. I should do. I should do that. So then we could track it with the hashtag. So. All right, we're coming up on our T minus 34 minutes. We're about to get into the T minus 30 minute block. We got anything left on the block above that? All right, so they're and we're pretty much done filling right on schedule, which is which is awesome. So uh, T minus 30 minutes, we're gonna start powering stuff on. Seems are seems pretty stable. I, I bet you could put it out to the safety lines. You can cut. You can cut that uh, the lift weight, or not cut it, but get it off the carabiner now. <laughs> unless that's unless that's helping keep it stable. All right. Uh oh. What happened to my countdown? Our, our, our countdown just changed colors and it's no longer showing the right time. Alright. Reset that countdown clock. <laughs> what happened here? We're just coming up on 2 minutes 30. I guess we got we're gonna have to reset the uh, countdown clock here because uh, I don't know what happened. It just went crazy. It was showing we had eight hours until launch, and it turned a different color. I kind of like the different color. It's easier to see. Yeah, well, I can set it to that color if it's easier to see. It's easier to see. All right. What? What? Oh. I know what was going on. Huh. It just got switched to... It was counting up. I should have just left it alone. All right, hold on. Technical difficulties. This is new for us. Current wind speed is about two miles an hour, but it's got a little remote control that controls the uh, countdown clock. Is that current time? Yeah. Well, that's we're back on track now. Countdown clock is reset. Cool. Balloon's pulling our safety weights. It's always a little nerve-wracking. It's, it's pulling away with the safety weights. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. We're at uh, T minus 31 here, coming in on. What? What? Countdown clock's freaking out again. What time is? Where are we? On? Maybe might be getting some interference from the, uh... uh... You could take one of the stakes from the, the tarp and stake those down if you want. Alright, so we got... Back to fixing my countdown clock here. We're freaking out again. Um... All right, we're gonna try this again. We'll see if it see if it sticks around and stops getting all screwy. Hopefully that's okay now, because we're gonna need to see that. I'm counting on that to know when to actually launch the balloon. So tweet a lobster. There, 
Gregorius says the Tweedle Lobster. I like that. I can power that on. Are we good for that? All right, we're starting our little micro payload here. The Pico payload is on. We're waiting for GPS signal. All right, so we're just... Uh, we can move to the next step too while we're waiting for that. I did not. Yep. All right, stand by. All right, so we're getting our our backup GPS system turned on. This is our absolute fail safe. It's our third tracking system. So while that's coming on, we're checking on. We got uh, we got GPS signal. We're just waiting on a couple more uh, a couple more GPS satellites uh, before that's good. Uh, negative. All right, the backup GPS is on. Copy, the brightness is down. Confirmed, Wi Fi is off. Uh, stand by, one second. Oh, there we go. Gregorius helping out with the flight team. Gregorius says KD2KPZ-12 is live and broadcasting. Okay, that's good. That's our micro payload. Thanks. Now I don't have to check hi, that. Gregorius. So <laughs> everybody's saying hi, Gregorius, here in the background. <laughs> Appreciate the help on the flight team. All right, we're attached to the capsule. Copy, the chase phone is on. Stand by for signal. So now we're just waiting for the backup GPS system to get a good signal and there we go that's a good signal all right confirm backup GPS has good signal uh, copy large antenna is connected our electronics making sure everything's powered up here
All right, copy. We got good signal from all devices. Copy, the antenna's in. Stand by, switching to battery power for the main flight computer. Main flight computer is on battery power, we got good tones. Standing by for a GPS signal. Alright, so we're powering up the payload here now. Those super annoying tones you're hearing, that's the uh, that's the payload system getting a GPS signal. There we go. We, oh, it's working on it. We have some satellites, just not all yet. It's not attached yet. Now the wind is picking up. Let's see, do you ever get birds trying to land on the balloon? No, we fly through the atmosphere pretty quickly. I mean, we're only in the uh, range of bird flight for just a couple of minutes so not many but not many birds give us a hard time um, what would you say the feasibility of a reusability system would be in a weather balloon um, well pretty most of our stuff is reusable just not the balloon itself I don't the balloon itself probably not going to be reusable even if you um, even if you got the balloon back the stretching it's not gonna not gonna be good for it all right I'm gonna Disconnect this here and slide it over. Oh boy, all right. Yeah. Can you, uh, where's the FAA inspector? You guys not coming. Um, no, that's what it's doing right now. Set that up here just gently. I'll hold on to that so it doesn't tip keel over. All right, so we're wait. Oh, there we go. Now we got. So the next steps are going to be verify signal reception and notify FAA. Got it. We're on track. Okay, we got a good we're good ahead. signal. Well, you got a bug in the system. Done. Yeah, we got a bug in the system. Literally a bug. Out of your bug. All right, so we are. We got good signal. We're ready to notify the FAA. Uh, verify signal reception. Uh, yeah, copy. We got signal reception. Roger. Notify FAA. Currently, all yes. right, we're gonna call. We're gonna call the FAA. All right, I'm gonna put you guys on mute for just one second while I call in our uh, notification to the FAA. Got to make two phone calls, and then we'll be right back with you.
there we go. We're good to go. Uh, FAA is notified. That was much easier than last time, so so we're all set there. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't call us back. Let's see. I'm going to switch this over so you guys can hear some of this stuff when we actually do launch. I'll give you that. All right, we are good to go with FAA. All right, so. All right, let's get cameras on here. All right, camera one. All right, the cameras are on and running. Are we ahead there? Okay. Yeah, I gotta turn those cameras off. We gotta wait until 15 for the cameras. Yeah. All right, so we're just we're waiting now for. Yeah. Don't say. Yeah. Don't say that yet. Things are going well. Just watch out for this pay, the little micro guy on the side here. All right. Oh, you know what? We missed the step. <laughs> yep. The way back at the beginning. Just to turn on that camera. Never did that. This one right here. Yeah. Well, too late now. I'm supposed to catch the balloon filling. Oh, sorry. Well, it's a good thing because I was standing like right in front of it all the whole time. They wouldn't see anything anyway. Here, we'll just turn. Not an SD card in it either. Oh, I guess it's a good thing we didn't try to turn it on. There's no SD card in that camera. All right, we're just waiting for T minus 15 here, then we're going to get the cameras turned on. You got humming, buzzing on the audio feed when you mute the mic. Oh, yeah, I think that's just because it's disconnected. When I disconnect it for the final time, right before launch, I am going to connect it to a different microphone so you hear the ambient sound so you won't get that buzzing. Um, I just had to shut it off for a minute to call, make my FAA call. So we are we're getting close to launch here now. Let's see. Uh, did we miss any uh, Facebook comments while we're checking out here? Mike says, "Woot! Yeah, I noticed you had a counter on the video feed after I asked. Oh yeah, yeah. So we got the counter on the video feed, and then we've got the uh, the big counter here, which is still running. Good. It's good news." All right. Yeah, it's good. it's good when it goes slow. You can get a you can take a breath, just kind of settle down for a second. No, I'm freak out. I'm freak out about what we forgot. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as we're covering the steps, and we're good. All right. I think we're ready for 15 here. So. One's on. Two's on. Three's on. Confirmation on all three cameras. Yep, we got three good cameras. Roger. Verify signal reception. As we got signal, we can tape this up here. Make sure we still got signal. Waiting for we're waiting for another broadcast here it's for the payload. Getting 
popular again, yeah. especially with the private yeah. Elon Musk. And yeah, I think that's what did it because now it's a. There we go. We got good signal on that one. I'm sorry, but he's holding And we got. There we go. Just got a good signal on that. All right, we got a good signal all the way around. Gonna tape. Uh, uh, Roger that. Let's stick your payload. All right, here we go. We're gonna seal it up. One's a safety line for the uh, the new micro payload. Used to be two, but there's a safety line that goes up both sides, so if it comes loose, it doesn't flap up to the top. I think that's good, right? Let's throw one more right here, just to get that corner secured. That's, yeah, I think we're good. That's good. All right, let's get all these lines up here. Where's our little clasp? Yeah, the next right. Oh, still sealing because we're securing the payload here. Oh. Yeah, they texted me and said they were running late and they were on their way, but. Uh, nope, I don't think so. I thought this park was going straight over. <laughs> For some reason, I had it. I thought it was a lot closer to getting day. Well, you know what? Farmington Town Park, I was thinking Farmington Town Line Park, and I was thinking it was like Town Line Road. And I got there. And luckily, I didn't put waste. Attached. Roger. You're attached right. to the, you're attached Ten minutes. To the yep, we are attached. It's long enough to do that. Just throw it through here real quick. Actually, you got a carabiner? spots like yeah, probably here there we go now we're talking that's better now we don't have to hold on to it all right we're 
safety lines. You see we're... Here? And then quadcopter. That's what we're up to. Yep, yeah, we're at eight minutes here. Yeah, well, it takes me a minute to walk up the payload, so we'll probably, we'll probably have to pull that down, release the anchors, and then I'll walk it up. Uh, so let me, I'm going to switch the cameras here now while we're while I'm over here. Gregorius says tracking isn't showing up on Hab Hub, probably because we're still on the ground. It, I imagine it'll show up shortly. Um, but all right, things are going to happen quick here, so I'm going to switch you over to our launch camera view. I'm going to switch microphones, and then I'm going to head over, and we're going to get ready to launch here in uh, just about seven minutes. So uh, so here we go. Stand by. Stand by for, uh, for launch here. All right. Hopefully you can hear that. Turn up the radio so you can hear what we're saying. And uh, here we go.
account. Holding for a second, had an error tone just as we were walking the payload up. So it's going to be just a minute, hopefully, just be a minute or two here.
See it up there? It's right in the middle there. Little, little dot. You can barely see it. Yep. Alright, All right, stand by. We're looking for signal reception. All right, we're still tracking it. I just want to get my microphone on so people can hear it. Yeah, those aren't really high clouds. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. It's pretty tiny. Yeah, it doesn't look like you're going to see much on there. But... Yeah. 
Hi, Tori. Pete. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Sorry, I got wires all over the place. Oh, no. All right, so we're doing, we're doing all right here. Things are tracking just fine. We switch over. I'm gonna switch over the map view here so we can can't really see much uh, on that. Let's see. Let's switch over. Uh, There we go. We switch over that. So we got the map up. We got good signal. I just got the one tracking symbol up right now, but we do have good signal from both tracking systems. Um, so everything is going uh, according to plan so far. Let's see if that holds up. Chase vehicle obviously is still here. We had a little bit of a hold here just as we were bringing the balloon up. Heard one of the error tones from the payload itself. Wanted to verify that we were actually getting signal. It did. It did recover the uh, um, recovered from the air, whatever that was. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. Um, we'll probably find out once it lands. Um, but it recovered. It seemed stable, so it's good enough to actually actually launch. I'm sure if you were in like an actual NASA rocket launch or SpaceX or something, you probably probably scrub it at the time of the air. But we we hold, held for just a minute. Uh, I think it was four minutes. We had launched four minutes late. Just wanted to hold, get connected, make sure it was consistently sending signal, uh, which it is. And so we're uh, we're in good shape here. Um, so, yeah, we are. It does look like it's following the interstate here, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but it does look like it's diving down now, which is going to be interesting. This whole wind pattern today was kind of, kind of interesting. It doesn't really seem to be following. Well, it's hard to tell. It's still pretty early, but it doesn't seem to be following the, uh, the tracking. So we're about 7,000 feet right now. All right, so we're going to hang out here for, for a minute here. Let me check the comments here, see if we got... Yeah, clouds are pretty high today. They are very high. I don't know if you can still see it. It was... All right. You still see it? I didn't see it. Yeah, right of the tree, straight up. Straight up. Right if you follow my finger. It's like a black dot. You can go find uh, it. Some glasses. I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, my, my sunglasses are. Somebody's got my sunglasses. Yeah, just go to the right of the tree and go straight up. I still don't see it. <laughs> you follow literally follow my finger. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Yeah. Wow, those clouds are really high. Yeah. We're already at 10,000 feet and we're still below the clouds. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. All right. So we. Let's turn that off. So we can still see it. We're in good shape. Transmitter's still transmitting. We're just over 8,000 feet here. Um, let's see. Um, Jason, this is with the guitar antenna. Yes, the Dash 12. The micro payload has the, the guitar string as an antenna, so that's the one we're testing today. We're going to see if that survives the descent phase. That's the uh, that's the part where the last antenna just snapped off. So we're going to see uh, see if that micro payload can survive uh, descent with that new guitar uh, guitar wire antenna. Matt, man, I forgot about the launch today. Did I miss anything? Well, we're already launched. We're up in the air. Success. Um, so uh, Hank says, when can I see the footage? Well, it all depends on how successful and how easy of a recovery we have. Um, we're gonna have, uh, if we can recover it right away, we'll get some pictures up right away. Video is a little bit harder, um, but we'll probably do a sneak preview. All of that, all of that banks on, the, on whether or not we can actually recover in a uh, somewhat easy fashion. Um, so that's the, big, that's the big if there. So, so there we go, we're, we're up in the air. Uh, this one went pretty well today. We had a little bit of a hold, but I don't mind that. Just a little tiny bit of a hold, just to verify that the system was was working correctly. Um, it does seem like let's see. Let me take a look. We're gonna go back to the prediction. Oh no, I guess it is following the prediction pretty well. So I don't. I didn't remember that little dive. This is the this is the pre-flight prediction. Uh, it did take a little dive to the south. I didn't remember that on the prediction. I remember that it took the eastern swing and then head south like that but it does look like it's following the flight path prediction pretty well so far so that's a good sign um let's see where's our live map here 
go back over here. All right, so while we're pulling the live map back up, um, yeah, there it is. We're still tracking. We're over 10,000 feet here now. And if you want to track this live yourself, it's overlookhorizon.com slash map. Web address is right here because um, the live broadcast will shut down here in a, a few minutes. Uh, we'll leave it up and running for a little while. Um, but the big thing that you don't want to miss is our new landing prediction software. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to find out. We'll see if it works. Um, but right after balloon burst, that's when that's going to kick in. So it's not going to kick in until after balloon burst. But if you are at overlookhorizon.com slash map, you'll see a little red X on the map. That's, that's our initial prediction. And that X will get updated and moved around the map as the payload starts descending. It'll start sending out new predictions on where it thinks it's going to land. So if you go over to overlookhorizon.com slash map, keep an eye on that X, see if it moves around. We'll see if it works. I have no idea. Uh, first time we've used it today. So hopefully the idea is, with any luck, that we can actually be at the landing site as it's coming down. Assuming it's accessible and it's not in one of the lakes. That's what we're really trying to avoid today. We don't want a water landing. The, the main payload will survive a water landing, but the little micro payload that's on the outside, that, that's not going to survive a water landing. So hopefully we don't have a water landing. Um, so let's see. I can just see it get a toll unpaid fine for using the tollway. <laughs> I think I would fight that. You can't charge me a toll if I'm 10,000 feet in the air, right? <laughs> How high up does the interstate go? Does that cover? Um, all right, so decent launch today. A well, pretty good launch, I would say, actually. So I'm gonna. We got some some people here hanging out. So I'm gonna go say hi for a minute. I'm gonna leave the live broadcast up until about 12:30 uh, is when we're gonna call it quits and get on the road. Um, so that's in about 20 minutes from now. But I'm going to go uh, say hi to everybody. I'll leave the map up. I'll give you some, some of the ambient sound so you can hear it a little bit. But, um, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep tracking. We'll see how well it does. And uh, we'll come back. We'll chat a little bit right around uh, right about 1230. We'll chat some more. And then just make sure you're following that map, over, overlookhorizon.com slash map, and you'll see all our tracking. You'll see our chase car, where that is, where the two transmitters on the balloon are, and that red X for the landing prediction. So we'll see if that works. All right, we'll be back in just a couple minutes here.
we're coming back. Probably should plug the microphone in before I start talking. Still, still tracking well. Everything is on track. So, um, so yeah, we're in we're in good shape here. Hopefully, this continues um, for the rest of the flight. Because so far, so good. So, uh, head over to OverlookHorizon.com/map. Do some tracking here. Uh, follow along with us, especially after balloon burst happens, because that's when the big new software kicks in. You'll start seeing landing predictions update. So, overlookhorizon.com slash map. Follow it all. we got a whole bunch of symbols on there. You'll see the chase car, the two balloons, the landing prediction. And uh, we will, uh, we'll, uh, we're going to have another broadcast shortly after balloon burst, hopefully. And as long as we have mobile bandwidth, we'll go through, uh, take you through the recovery phase, and we'll see, uh, see what kind of adventure awaits us at the landing site hopefully it, hopefully we're not doing a scuba recovery <laughs> uh, so so there we go that's it for for this um, we're up and running uh, successful launch today and uh, we're gonna see how the flight goes so far so good we're about 25,000 feet and uh, we'll see see where this comes up we're expecting uh, right around skinny Atlas Lake is where we're expecting the landing so uh, hopefully not in the lake but near the lake so all right, thanks everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us this morning. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the little notification bell because the next broadcast will be on YouTube only. Um, so make sure you hit that notification bell on our YouTube channel and you're subscribed uh, so that you get notified as soon as we go live for the recovery efforts. I would expect the so landing should be at about 2.45 because uh, it's about a 2 hour and 45 minute flight. Um, so if landing's at 2.45 and probably around 2.30, I would expect that we would go live. Um, so look for that live broadcast around 2.30. Uh, that's 2.30 Eastern Time. Uh, what is that? That's uh, 18.30 UTC. Um, so right around 18.30 UTC or 2.30 Eastern Time, that's when you should see the next broadcast somewhere around that area. But uh, in the meantime, overlookhorizon.com slash map, and uh, we'll see how this landing prediction software works out so all right thanks everybody for joining us really appreciate it i didn't think i saw any more comments you guys probably took off when i left you there for a minute but um but uh let's see it'll end up at hancock international airport no i hope it doesn't arrive at hancock international airport it is headed that direction but it's supposed to dive south we don't want to end up at the airport so we might have to answer some questions uh, but we should be well away from the airport uh as long as it follows what's what it's supposed to do so all right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. And uh, again, overlookhorizon.com slash map for the map and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the next live broadcast for recovery. And who knows what awaits, uh, what adventures and troubles we're going to run into come recovery time. But so far, so good. And we'll catch you in a couple hours to see how the recovery goes. All right, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. See ya.